everybody and welcome to the next gaming interview. Now this time I'll be interviewing... Hey guys, my name is Jar Red and I'm here with Patrick Barrett doing some interview questions. I'm happy to be here, uh, so go ahead and hit me with them questions. When did you get into gaming? Um, I'd have to say I probably got into gaming when I was just a kid. Um, probably way back in the 90s, maybe even, maybe even, yeah, about the 90s. Um, I was playing games back when Windows was Windows 3.1, and there was DOS and, you know, old antiquitous stuff like that. Um, and one of the first games that I really fell in love with that really got me into gaming was a game called Monkey Island by a company called LucasArts. You've probably heard of the game, and you've probably heard of LucasArts. Um... And pretty much anything that LucasArts was putting out at that time, to me, was was like gold. I couldn't I couldn't get enough of it. Um, just the storytelling and the engagement, the, and just being able to escape from you know the world around and being able to go into this fictional fantasy world and just being able to play around with some funny characters and stuff. It was really what got me started down the path of gaming. And from there, I, I mean, I moved on from just about everything. I mean, it really opened the door uh, for gaming for me. What kind of games do you like? Um, honestly, and it sounds probably like a cop out a little bit, but I, I, I really love all types of games. Um, I mean, it'd probably be easier for me to list which kind of games I don't like, and there are some. Um, but to answer the question, you know, if I had to choose particular type of game I would probably go with your you know, like your RPG type games like The Witcher 3 um, Mass Effect stuff like that but I mean I, I love just about everything I, I really adore anything that has to do with space space games like Elite Dangerous and I even like No Man's Sky despite its shortcomings and um, but just anything to do with space I absolutely love and adore um, um, I'm really lately. I've been really into um, like your your narrative story driven type games like Detroit Become Human and Heavy Rain before that and Beyond Two Souls before that. Um, I really anything with an engaging story, something that makes you actually like the characters that you're playing or watching. Um, I really dig those type of games as well. And it's funny to say, like, because on, on my channel I've do, been doing a lot of horror games, and traditionally I've never really been a big fan of horror games, not because I didn't necessarily like horror, the horror genre, but I'm just a really, I'm a really big chicken and my imagination get, I get carried away quite easily, but since I've been doing them more and more on my, on my own channel, I've actually started to appreciate and enjoy that genre um, more than I used to, so uh, horror games have strangely enough become one of the type of games that I actually really enjoy playing. What fan base in the gaming community would you say is the worst and most toxic? Um, I think honestly I think most fan bases are pretty toxic and horrible. <laughs> not, not to make it sound like that being a fan of something is bad. But when you start to label something as a fan base and you get a lot of people who are really into a certain thing and it creates like this sort of like social structure to me that's when it starts to become sort of a toxic environment for anyone i mean you mostly just end up getting a bunch of children screaming um, at their games and ignoring simple necessities like eating sleeping and stuff like that and at that point i mean any fan base in my opinion becomes toxic and it's really hard to to choose one or the other um, just because um, in my opinion most um, fan bases are pretty darn toxic in my opinion what is your favorite console uh, right now my favorite console um, is definitely got to be the ps4 um, I honestly, I'm a big fan of all the consoles. At one point, I, you know, back in the Xbox 360 time period, I had all the diff all the consoles. I didn't choose one or the other, but lately, um, I've I've pretty much chosen PS4 as my as my favorite. Um, when it just it mostly comes down to 
um, software quantity and quality in it with like exclusives and stuff like that and and ps4 just has that um, xbox doesn't really in my opinion doesn't really have that many exclusive titles that would draw me or or, or uh, talk me into buying that console for just one or two things and and nintendo is i mean they've got some really great titles um but there's not that much there's really just not that many not again not not enough to <laughs> warrant spending you know a couple hundred bucks on on that system so i definitely hands down is the ps4 uh their their exclusives i mean if we're just talking about exclusives then, then definitely the ps4 what game are you most hyped for gotta say the game i'm most hyped for at the moment is red dead redemption 2 i am a huge fan of the series way back to the original red dead even in in, in red dead redemption the one the prequel to red dead redemption 2 but i think the western genre fits perfectly in that open world setting and the developers rockstar um they're masters of the craft and pretty much anything that they create is just it's it's amazing so definitely the game i'm looking forward to the most at this moment because that's always changing um there's always something new or just around the corner but right now the one that i am definitely most hyped about is red dead redemption 2 looking forward to slinging guns in the old west once more what is one game you would make if you could i suppose you know it's a really interesting question to think about making a game it was you know the idea of making the perfect game was something that I did a lot when I was younger and I've gotten to the point where I just enjoy what's being made right now but if you know one of the games that I, if, if I had to say one game I could make and I could make it now I would I would love to make a Jade Empire sequel um, I don't know if you guys remember Jade Empire but it was like ancient Chinese RPG that Bioware put out back when uh, Night Guild Republic was first coming out. Um, just a fantastic game. I absolutely loved it. I, I, I had so much fun with it. And I waited and waited and waited for a sequel. And we never got one. I guess they were too busy making your Dragon Ages and your and your Mass Effects and stuff like that. That they just never got around to it. So I, if, if I could make any game in the world, I think... I think Jade Empire 2 would, would be my pick, definitely. What company would you choose to make your ideal game? And I suppose, you know, talking about Jade Empire, if I had to choose any game developer to make that game, um, I would I would choose CD Projekt Red because the work they did with The Witcher 3, I think, blew everyone away. I mean, there's this company that had, what, two games? under their belt and it was the witcher 1 and the witcher 2 um, and then here they come with the witcher 3 which just i think it really it really set the bar really high for games in that genre the open world rpg genre and i would love i mean if, if i if i could in, in the perfect world if i could choose one developer to make one game i would love to see cd project red tackle like a jade empire sequel i would love for them to somehow get those rights and make that game because i think that could be one of the best games ever in my opinion what is your favorite location in a video game like for example a town or a dungeon yeah i know i keep you know i keep loving on cd project red and the witcher 3 and but one of my favorite game locations of any game of all time has got to be novigrad in, in the witcher 3 i mean it's just Again, the way that they made that game, it, it is a living, breathing, thriving world. And when you're in Novigrad, it's not just like this tiny little, like, sort of city. Like, it feels like you're in a big city. And I love that feeling. And every time you turn around, or you go around a corner, you go into another building or an alleyway, it's different. It feels different. There's a different... Um, atmosphere and it depends also on the type of people that are living in that specific area of the city like the slummy areas or the high rich areas you know they really did a fantastic job just making that city come to life like I've never seen in any other game and some games come close don't get me wrong and, 
but just Novigrad is one of my favorite places to just I just go there in the game and I'll walk around and just pretend like I live there and and it's easy to do because the the town the city it's so believable it's so alive it's so well put together and it's one of my favorite in-game locations of all time in your opinion what are three of the worst games ever made worst worst games ever made <laughs> that that's a lot um, like I said I've been playing games since Windows 3.1 and DOS to now and there's been a lot a lot of bad games come through since then um, at this moment like just trying to think of um, just archiving all the different really bad games that I've played over the years um, there's maybe there's there's a couple that I can think of right off the top of my head um, and I'm, I mean I can only really answer based on the games that I've actually played and there's a lot of games that I haven't played and there's a lot of games that a lot of people consider to be the worst games ever made and I might not necessarily agree with them um, but the first one that comes to mind is definitely Assassin's Creed Unity and it just I've never been so like the feeling of betrayal from Ubisoft and that game <laughs> which is I don't know maybe that's not the best way to describe it but being one of the first next gen titles to come out and it looked so amazing in the previews and and the E3 events and stuff and it just it looked like it looked great and then when we finally got our hands on it it was this glitchy buggy broken game that honestly I stopped playing it until they fixed it it was that bad like I couldn't I couldn't continue to play it it was that bad um, and I would say the second game of that would are the I would have to say that my second pick for worst game would have to be Elix. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of this. Um, it was made by the same company that made Goth the Gothic series, I believe. And I really wanted to like this game when it was for, when I was first seeing um, previews for it and stuff. And I mean the whole idea of like a futuristic viking i mean it had me sold and i ended up buying it when it was new um and it's just it's just a bad game i mean it could be a great game but it's not <laughs> and i'm not trying to be mean to the developers or anything and i'm sure that a lot of people tried and did a really a whole lot of hard work on it but it's just it, to me it's almost unplayable it, it's just the mechanics, the gameplay, the voice acting, the graphics are dated. I mean, it just it was, it was not an enjoyable experience. I don't think I've played more than maybe an hour or two of it to this day because I just have a really hard time sitting down and actually making any kind of headway. It's that bad. Um, and I would say probably my top pick for worst game of all time at this moment in my mind um, would have to be Condemned 2. Um, I loved the first Condemned game on the Xbox 360 back in the day. It, I loved running around and investigating and, and, and the combat was so visceral and it was creepy and it was dark and it was, it was just a lot of fun and when I heard there was going to be a sequel I was super excited. And, I'll, and like some of other games we've talked that I talked about on Unity, um, when we finally got it, it was just it it missed so bad. Um, <laughs> it, it it disappointed in, in a way that it just like it hurts your soul <laughs> to think about it. Um, and it's a shame that 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 um, franchise never continued or got a reboot or something because it's, it's it was a fantastic game the first one and i really feel like they could have just taken like everything from the first one put it in the second one and it would have been good but they like they wanted to change everything and made it really weird and 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 dumb and it just it just wasn't any fun who is your favorite video game music composer Favorite music composer? Well, that that's actually kind of a tough question for me to answer because I just I'm not that familiar with the composers of the music in the games that I love, which is kind of a shame because I'm a musician and I love music, so I probably should know, but I I just don't. So I actually had to look this one up because I didn't know. Um, and his name is Koji Kondo, 
and he did the, the composition, uh, the music for Z Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which I'm sure everyone has played or at least have heard the music from. And I absolutely just love it. And, you know, any, at any point, anywhere, anytime, if I hear something that even remotely sounds like the music from Ocarina of Time, or if I hear the actual music from Ocarina of Time, it instantly transports me back to my childhood. And just that feeling of just wanting to get out of school, back home, so that I could play this awesome game. And at the time, music, I mean, I loved the music even back then, and, but it wasn't like my primary, you know, love of the game. But now, looking back and being able to have that nostalgia, anytime I hear the music of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, it instantly transports me back to that that golden age of adolescent gameplay, and I and I can't I can't get enough of it, honestly. <laughs> well, farewell, my friends. I am really thankful to have been able to have this chance to answer some questions, and thank you, Patrick Barrett, for having me here. It's been a blast. Okay, everybody, that is the interview. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Go and check out Red Jar's channel. He's got some Detroit Becomes Human and some horror games on, on his channel. That I can't uh, talk. <laughs> He's got some pretty good content, so I highly recommend that y'all check him out. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.